on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3. WHPC. New York moms and dads, tune in. Dr. Monique Collier Nichols, a member of the NAACP New York State Conference and pediatrician, talks about the importance of vaccinating your children. As a pediatrician here in New York, I've seen firsthand how devastating vaccine preventable diseases can be to our children. The CDC recommends a vaccination schedule that helps protect against 14 serious diseases before the age of two. Yet, according to the National Immunization Survey, among African American children aged 19 to 35 months, nationwide, approximately 30% have not been fully vaccinated with all the CDC recommended vaccines. As parents, getting our children vaccinated with all doses at the scheduled time is one of the most important steps we can take to help protect them from serious illnesses. Families without vaccine insurance coverage may be eligible for vaccines at reduced or no cost through the Vaccines for Children program or VFC. Learn more at vaccinateourchildren.com. This message is sponsored by the NAACP New York State Conference in partnership with Pfizer. Alexa, can you please do my food shopping today? Food shopping today added to your shopping list. Alexa, can you do my math homework for me? Hmm, I'm not sure. Alexa, play WHPC. Play WHPC. You can now listen to the voice of NASA Community College on your Amazon Echo. Simply say, Alexa, play WHPC. I am already playing WHPC. Sorry. So go ahead and buy a silicone steamer in the shape of a faceless melting pig. Buy a silicone steamer in the shape of a faceless melting pig. Yeah, that exists. And while you shop, play WHPC. <laughs> or buy a headband with a mullet hair attached to it. I refuse to buy a headband with mullet hair attached to it. Yeah, that exists too. Not sure why. But when you buy it, you can play WHPC. So play WHPC on your Amazon device today. And thanks for listening to 90.3 W H P C. Jacob Vox. Jacob oh my Vox. God. Oh, you want that Jacob Vox? I just did my t- <laughs> That was for Joe Ardina, who was at an academic advisor's oh, meeting. Man. And I wish him nothing but the best. Are you the real Slim Shady? No, that's Eminem. That's because, Marshall because, Mathers. Because you're sitting down and not standing up. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Will the real Jacob Vox please sit down? No problem. You're <laughs> listening to Beyond the Game on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. We are live twice a week, Tuesdays at 5 p.m. and Fridays at 3 p.m. I am Jacob Volk. You can follow me on Twitter at Real Jacob Volk. Sitting across from me is Eric Fischetti, who you can follow on Twitter at Sergeant Fish. Number to call if you have something on your mind, or to win a pair of tickets to Monday Night Raw. Or if you want to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> at the Nassau Coliseum this Monday is 516-572-7440. And let's get to baseball hey. tonight. The Yankees will continue their four-game series at Minute Maid Park against the Astros. Eric, the nine-game win streak was fun while it lasted, wasn't it? It was, and I hope I'm not the only one that does this when I say this. No matter how bad the loss is, I look for positives. Okay. Do, you, do you do that, too? Um, Depending on the loss, maybe? I mean, it depends. If it's like a 15 to nothing blowout, what's the positive there? Basically, like, you search for something to be like, okay, well, this happened. See, well, no, I'm, I'm just a realist. I'm the kind of person who... If all right, you suck. Yeah, if you're garbage, I'm going to tell you, you're garbage. You know who wasn't garbage, though? Sonny Gray. No, Sonny, Sonny Gray pitched well. Sonny Gray pitched well against an outstanding Astros lineup. Why can't the Yankees hit Charlie Morton? I don't think anyone can hit Charlie Morton, to be honest with you. Yeah, but it just seems like the Yankees have more trouble with him than anyone else. Because you know what? He killed him in Game 7, and he killed him last night. Well, to be honest with you, do you remember how Charlie Morton used to be? He used to be like a soft-throwing... Right-hander. He used to throw like 93 miles an hour. Now he was he's throwing, horrible with the Pirates. Now he's throwing 99, 100 miles per hour. It's a huge change. Yes, it is. And you know what? I don't think, and to be honest, I, I know I know you, you don't think. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Something, that, that's why I'm here, and I'm not at Harvard. But um, <laughs> I kind of had an issue with, and, and, and was very slightly, I kind of had an issue with Boone resting Judge. You really had an issue with that? A little bit, only because this is a huge series, and you need to get as much experience as you can. Because I think we're uh, 100% putting checks on both the Astros and the Yankees being in the playoffs this year. Yeah, of and, course. And I think what you need to do is get as much experience as you can against this Astros pitching staff. Because everyone on that pitching staff, just go down the line, Verlander, 
Keiko, McCullers, Morton. They're all Garrett r- Cole. Garrett oh my god, Garrett Cole, where did he come from? But um <laughs> could have been a Yankee. Yeah, but in fact should have been a Yankee he was drafted by the Yankees. That's right, I remember that. But <laughs> basically you need to get as much experience as you can. This Astros lineup can mow everybody down. They are the team to beat in the American League. It's not the Yankees. But be on, on and honestly because it's because the Astros won the World Series and got better. Of course. Because Garrett Cole was a huge addition. And basically, I'm a firm believer in... And they in, have Verlander for a full year. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a firm believer in when you have a full team, like basically like nothing else changed. Like now, with the exception of the Astros, you got Garrett Cole and now you have Verlander for a full year. Nothing changed. Chemistry. It's still there. They're still a very good team. And they got better by adding two people for a full year, which is Verlander and Garrett Cole. Absolutely. And you know what? It's so evenly matched, the Yankees and the Astros. This is a budding rivalry. I'm not going to say it's going to be bigger than Yankees-Red Sox. Well, that's the best rivalry in the sport. I agree with you. It might be the best rivalry of all time. I would tend to agree with that. Maybe. Although I'm partial. Maybe. Well, yeah, because we, we see you know the Yankees and the Red Sox. We, we don't see Canadians Bruins. We don't see... I, I don't thought you were going to say Maple Leafs Canadians. Well, yeah, even that too. Even Giants Dodgers too. Yeah, like, that's a good rivalry. Don't like Those aren't as big Packers, as... Packers Bears. Yeah. Lakers sure, Celtics. Sure, keep going, Sixers Celtics. Duke UNC. Perfect. I mean, like, it's, it's, it's a budding rivalry, which is great for baseball because MLB loves it when the Yankees are good. MLB loves it when the Yankees come up short. Let's be honest, because the Yankees still have the target on their back, even though they did not win the World Series last year. Even if the Yankees were to win only 60 games, there's still a target on their back because they're the Yankees. Yes. I mean, it's good to be the king. That's all I'm going to say. It's good to be the king. Going back to Aaron Judge, I see your point about getting experience off of Morton, but it really didn't bother me that much. It's one game. It's April. It's the last day in April. It's April 30th. Do you really think something on April 30th is going to affect what happens in October? Well, to be honest, no. But I do think experience counts, especially in baseball, because there's no such thing as momentum in baseball. That is true. I just couldn't get upset about it. I, 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 really I, wasn't, I wasn't screaming from the rooftops. I I wasn't like, oh, you know, if Aaron Judge... And I was like, oh, come on. I mean, like... I mean, the one thing I guess I feel bad for is the people who went to the game and expected to see Aaron Judge and only saw him pinch hit. Yeah, I mean, yes. He, but he but was that's in, unavoidable. Yes, I understand. But to be honest, I just think that you need to get experience if you know you're going to see the team in October. I see your point. It's so early. I, I just, understand. I can't get upset over it. I honestly just can't get upset over my, it. I, my, I know it was a big topic today. I just couldn't get upset over my it. My priorities are straight. Aaron Judge not being in the game yesterday against the Astros in a game on the last day of April. My issue, not... my issue was only scoring one run against uh, the Astros. Do you that's, realize, that's the issue. Do you realize the last couple of games that the Yankees have played in Minute Maid Park, they've, they've only garbage. scored one run or less? They cannot hit in Minute Maid Park. And it's not like Minute Maid Park is a pitcher's ballpark. I think it's the pitcher. To be, I, I think it's just they the pitcher. They can't hit the Astros in Houston. I don't know what it is, but they do have to get their act together in this series. I'll take a split. Give me a split in this series. Fine. And I'll be happy. Sign me up. Yes. Also tonight, the Mets will start their three-game series at City Field against the Braves. What are your thoughts on the series? They needed to do what they needed to do in San Diego. Yep. Matt Harvey needs to get his act together. And I called that Joey Lucchesi would do well. Yes, you did. All right. Yeah, I yeah, yeah there it is. That. And here I thought that we were going to go one show without you doing that, but then I realized I remembered who, who's hosting. Yeah, right. I was going to say, you're the only guy who can stop me, and I've got 100 pounds on you. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you're just bigger than me. That's it. That, that, that's true. Listen, I'm 257 pounds. I would have never guessed. But um, <laughs> not a bad thing. I just would have never guessed. Oh, man. D- look. To be honest, this is actually shocking how, and I'm going to say this to the air quotes, big this series is for the Mets. Because the Braves weren't really expected to do much. They were expected to be like at the bottom of the barrel with the Phillies, maybe doing okay, maybe not doing as well as they are now. Better yet. The Phillies are doing well, too. I know. Gabe Kapler has gotten his act together, After after that first week, he got it all out of the way. Yeah. Hey, listen, if you're going to make dumb managerial decisions, make them in April. Every every Philadelphia team is like on fire right now. (laughs) Like the Sixers, the Phillies, the Eagles, who's next? The Flyers, 
Dodgers. <laughs> I mean, like, come on, oh, Philly. Man. What are you doing? Please send your magic up here. Please. I will say tonight, Mike Soroka is pitching. Watch out for this kid. He's got good stuff. Okay. He's going to do really, really good things in this league. It's actually a good pitching matchup tonight. It's a good matchup in general. It's Soroka the- versus Syndergaard. That's a damn good matchup. This is the first time since City Field Open that the Mets and the Braves are so close in the standings. Yes. In in a series this early, especially. Thursday's matchup is supposed to be good, too. Tehran versus Vargas. That's I, a, Vargas was not good in San Diego, and I blame that on the broken hand and not getting enough pitching time. Yeah, absolutely. But he got shelled. They're both going to get their acts together. I promise you that. I believe you. So we got about a minute left. It's time for the bottom of the ninth. Eric, I have no choice but to start with you. Oh, God forbid. (laughs) So, basically, all I'm going to say is uh, my dad and my stepmom, Sue, landed in Colorado and are listening to us, actually. Wow. Our reception gets out to Colorado. That's awesome. And and you know what? They're they're visiting uh, Sue's son, also named Eric. Wow, that's weird. Spelled differently? No, it's E-R-I-C. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because if it was E-R-I-K, I I could understand. He's Eric L. I'm Eric F. And honestly, just... You are an F. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah, good one, good one. So so original, and all and uh, yeah, two two drums and a cymbal fall off a cliff. You are, you are having too much fun. Relax. Yes, we are. Relax, relax. But Joe, honestly, you're banned from the show. This is too good. <laughs> all I can say is is that Jordan Montgomery is on the hill tonight for the Yankees. He has been pitching well. I just hope, I just hope that he that some runs can get through the Astros. To yeah. be honest with you, like this is a series that isn't huge, but I would love it. I would love it if they got out of Houston with at least. To split. Yes, I agree with you 100%. I want to talk about the New Orleans Saints draft class. I said before that the Giants had the best draft out of any team. I think the Saints had the worst. I believe you. Marcus Davenport, to trade up for him and pick him at 14, was so strong. Stupid! I can't even begin to express it. And Rick Leonard in the fourth round was an undraftable prospect. Can you imagine how much pressure is on Davenport right now? He's got to live up to those picks. Oh my God! So what was it? Two firsts? Yeah, it was two firsts. How how is a kid supposed to live up to that? It was so dumb, so stupid. I don't know what's going on in New Orleans, but they're going to be a lousy team next year. All right, looks like we're at bad out of time here. On Beyond the Game, for the one and only Eric Fischetti, <laughs> I am Jacob Volk saying that you don't think experience means anything until you have it.